Alright, hey guys, welcome back. Um, so I was originally going to do the Voltage Irresistible Mistakes uh, Let's Play again, but since I'm having some trouble um, screen recording my phone, I decided to go ahead and play a different game this time. So this is Mystic Destiny Serendipity of Aeons. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. Um, I've actually played this game before. I've done a bunch of the routes. I've done, um, oh my god, I don't remember their names at all. It has been so long. Okay, let's see. I've done, well, I've seen some of uh, Shoes. I've done the first, what, three chapters that are free, which is pretty cool. I have bought, wait, let me get back to, this is killing me. Okay, so, I have played some of Shoes, I've bought Takuya's, Takumi's, I hope these are the right names. I feel like this is not his name, Tatsuya. Okay, there we go. So I've done, I've bought Tetsuya's and I've played it all. I've played Takumi's and I recently bought Hikaru's book one and I finished it in like a day. Um, I'm just waiting on book two. So I was kind of thinking that I would just replay one of the routes, but I thought that would be kind of boring for you guys. When I remembered that I actually hadn't seen any of Shinji's um, route, just because I don't know, like his sprite, his personality didn't really interest me that much, so I kind of just stayed away from him. But you know, I decided since I haven't played his, it would make a good let's play video. But since some people might be new to Mystic Destinies, I decided that I would upload two videos. The first video, this one, is going to be the prologue in its entirety. And that way, people who are new to Mystic Destinies can watch this video before they move on to the next one. So yeah, let's get started, I guess. Um, what you really need to know about this, I'm just gonna keep her real name or whatever, like her default name, but what you really need to know about this game is that it's a fantasy romance, or tome game. Um, and it's basically about this girl, uh, Tsubasa. And she suddenly gains these powers that she can't control. And she needs to choose one guy who can, you know, help her through it. And by choosing one of the routes, you, you know, go along their story, learn more about that specific guy, and you know, romance, yeah, yeah, the typical stuff. But there is an overarching story that kind of goes on as you play each route, and you learn a little bit more about Tsubasa's, you know, background, her family, and ultimately, you know, big revelations and stuff start coming. I won't get into that because that's like spoilers. So... Yeah, that's the story. Um, very general, I guess. But, you know, I, want, I don't want to ruin anything, I don't want to spoil anything. So let's just get started. Today, my first year of undergraduate studies begins at Hagiwara University. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I made sure to get here early so I can make it on time to my first lecture. But somehow, I managed to get horribly lost. I climbed the stairs to look for my classroom on the second floor, but I couldn't find it. I turned to go back down, still reading the map. Suddenly, I collide into something, or rather, someone. Whoa. I lose my balance and throw out my arms to catch myself. My things fly out of my hands, scattering all over the steps. But the guy I ran into puts out his arms to catch me before I fall forward. Nice. The usual, typical Otome scene, basically. And Shu was actually, Sho, was actually my first pick. Like, he was the first guy I decided to, you know, try out his route. But ultimately, I wasn't that interested, so I just kind of moved on to the next one. <laughs> anyway, 
Over his shoulder, I can see the contents of my bag that have been upended. I click my tongue and try to move to gather them. But then I realize the guy still has his arm around my waist. I pull back to look at him and our eyes meet. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks for catching me, but could you let me go now? Nice. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, he's blushing. He lets go of my waist hastily and takes a small step back. Here, let me pick those up for you. He bends down to gather my things before they get stepped on by the passers-by. I'm Shu. I will never say his name properly. I feel like Shu is not the right way to say it. It's like show or something. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll go with show because Shu just sounds stupid. He picks up my map and looks at it before handing everything to me. Is this your first year here? Yeah. Then welcome. It's my second year here, second year here myself. He taps a line on my class schedule. If you were looking for this, you just passed it. It's back down the hall on the left. Oh. Thanks. I've barely taken the paper back before Sho grabs my wrist to look at my watch. Oh crap. I just realized my next class is on the other side of the campus. I got a jet. See ya. Before I fully realize what's happening, Sho has turned around and is sprinting away. What was that all about? But since I'm about to be late for class, I don't have much time to wonder. Pushing Sho out of my mind, I start running towards class myself. After a morning of classes, it's finally lunchtime. I'm at the counter, paying for my food. Or at least, I'm supposed to be. When I reach in my bag, I grope around for my wallet, but I can't find it. Oh, this is going to be embarrassing. The cashier stares at me, wholly unimpressed by, with my lack of preparation. Oh no. Don't tell me I lost it. I'm starting to panic when a black leather wallet is thrust in front of my face. Is this yours? I'm not actually sure at first, until I see the small star-shaped charm hanging off of it. I feel immense relief as I take the wallet. Oh good, that's a relief. I was looking everywhere for you. Thank you. I thought I lost it for good. Is there anything- Don't worry about it. You're cute enough that it's payment enough for me if you smile. Aww. He is actually my favorite thus far. I played uh, Takumi's route and it was, it was pretty good. I liked it. Um, anyway, the, he is not the route we're going at right now, so put that out of my mind. He looks expectant enough that I managed to pull my lips into some semblance of a smile. Looking strangely satisfied, he points to the annoyed cashier before hopping over the line's railing. Sorry, I'm like drinking tea while I'm doing this. It's not that hot anymore, so I'm trying to finish it. Um, I hope I don't make like any loud noises when I'm, you know, drinking it. If so, just ignore it if you can. Sorry about that. Completely flustered, I shake my head to clear it. I quickly turn around to pay for my food and take my tray to head outside. I've been co cooped up all day. I need some fresh air. I step outside into sunshine as a chilly breeze passes right through me. I shiver involuntarily, but it feels refreshing. Thankfully, it also means that there's hardly anyone outside. I sit on a bench on the grass and relax as I admire the campus's scenery. But then I hear a voice nearby. I slowly stop chewing and look around to identify the voice. Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. There's no way that actually happened. The male's voice is laughing and energetic, yet I see no one around. It sounds like someone talking on the phone. Whatever it is, it's kind of annoying. Someone moves into view near the flowers. They seem to be looking at nothing in particular. <laughs> fine, fine, I believe you. You don't have to look so annoyed. Aha, I spotted the mystery man. I wonder what's so funny. Startled by the sudden sound of a phone ringing, I nearly choke on my food. <laughs> huh? I slowly, almost fearfully, look over at the guy I thought was talking on the phone and see him pull out, pull one out of one out of his pocket. He checks it and then puts it away, all while happily talking to nothing. <laughs> I'm pondering what just happened when I noticed that the man is looking at me. Maybe you should brush up on your spying skills if you want to listen in on people. What? Bruh, like, you're out in the open, like, what do you expect? We're the only two people here. I quickly turn back around. Okay. I try to ignore the weird guy and manage to finish 
to finish eating my lunch in relative peace. I guess he can like see ghosts or something since he's talking to nothing. I actually don't know anything about Shinji. All the other guys I know like who they're supposed to be, like they're, you know, supernatural, whatever. Not him though. When I get to my apartment, I open up my laptop. I want to sign up for that business club I heard about before tomorrow. My phone vibrates before I can do much though. I take it out and realize that there's a rare email from my mother. Also, I really like this. I thought this was like a really cool addition. I don't think I've seen like a phone sprite thing before. So this was interesting. It like kind of immerses you in the story more. Um, how was your first week of school? Is everything going well? You left your laptop charger here. I'll be at home Saturday, so could you come get it then? I'd like to take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate your first week. Oh, of course I felt left something important at home. And I was trying to be so careful about everything. Mm -hmm. I would not leave my laptop charger behind. Like, my laptop is my life. I would not do that. That would be... My laptop and my charger would be like the one thing that would definitely come with me. I'd probably forget everything else. Like, I've forgotten my toothbrush whenever I go somewhere so many times. It's insane. <laughs> the end of the email was a bit strange, though. She's never really been the type to celebrate things. Regardless of my thoughts, I type a reply that I'll be there on Saturday. But the strange feeling the email gave me never goes away. The next day, I managed to get through classes without getting lost. I finished classes for today and I'm headed to the first meeting of the business club. Room 129. There it is. I push the door open. As soon as I do, a black-haired man turns to face me. Welcome to the... He stops mid-sentence and stares at me. I'm struck silent for an entirely different reason. The man has striking aqua-colored eyes. I finally get this. Because I played Hikaru's uh, book one and it kind of, you know, says a bit about this. I think that the first time I missed this, him being surprised. Anyway, we stare at each other for a few moments before a voice from behind me interrupts. Hey, come on, let me in. Flustered, I hurry to move out of the way and step into the classroom. As the man goes by, I recognize his distinctive hair. Oh, it's that weird guy who was talking to himself. I glance at the black-haired man again, but he's turned away from me. I turn to face the class and lock eyes with a young-looking guy in yellow. Is that the guy from the cafeteria? He gives me a big smile that strikes me as suddenly familiar. Weird. I feel like I know him from somewhere. He lifts his legs up and jumps to his feet in one fluid movement. Then he turns to the newcomer. Hey Shinji, I came here to talk to you. Oh? Oh, I forgot about that. I'll lend you that book next week, Takumi. Huh? It's not about the book, it's... Excuse me, please don't block the walkway. How is she still doing that? Like, I thought she moved into the room. I hear an irritated voice behind me. I turn to look, equally irritated at his rudeness. <laughs> nice. Love at first sight already, Tetsuya? <laughs> I'm just blushing, I'm dead. Sh shut up, Shinji. I immediately move away from the door and go to sit down. A few moments after I do, someone starts yelling. No! The peaches are running away! I look over to where I heard the voice and see a guy in a bright orange hoodie sleeping on the couch. Is that? I think it was... Sho? What the hell? Why is he here? I'm not really sure. He did stay up pretty late practicing for a part he just got, though. So I guess napping? I think he said something about wanting to join the club. Whatever. Let's just start the meeting. Thanks for watching the club for me, Professor Kazama. Tetsuya turns around, but the professor is gone. Mm -mm. How did he slip out without anyone noticing? But no one else seems to think it's all that strange. The meeting commences without any further weirdness, though I'm surprised at how small it is. Since it seems like we have some new members this year, maybe we should start this meeting by introducing ourselves. I'm Tetsuya Yukimura, the club president and a third year. I'm Shinji Hiriyama, a third year. I've been a member of this club for a long time. Though I think everyone here probably already knows me, I'm Takumi Arai, or Taku for short. It's my first year here, but I'm not 
actually even not part of this club. <laughs> I raise an eyebrow at Takumi's introduction. So why is he even here? I look at Sho, Sho, and Tetsuya kicks the couch. Sho startles awake. Huh? Where am I? At that business club you were talking about joining? Huh? Oh. Oh. We're doing introductions and it's your turn. Oh, all right. I'm Sho Hattori, a second year. I just joined the club. My acting teacher told me if I want to become an actor, it's good to get some understanding with how business works, so here I am. Everyone looks at me expectantly and I stand up and slightly bow. I hope everybody else stand, stood up when they did their introductions, otherwise this is weird. I'm Tsubasa Fujimoto. It's my first year here. It's nice to meet you all. I sit back down and Tetsuya starts going over what the purpose of this club is and the kinds of things we'll be doing in it. But every now and then, I see the purple-haired guy, Shinji, glancing at me. What? Am I like super attractive today? Eventually, the meeting is over and I stand up and grab my back. But Shinji walks slowly up to me like he's in a daze. He stares me in the face. You're not. What? Jeez, is there something on my face? Suddenly, Shinji just walks right past me. You know, I don't remember this happening either. Like, what? I guess I just forgot everybody's rowdy. Like, what they did except for, like, you know, generic stuff. Um, it's been a while since I've um, played the prologue, so, you know. It's as if I don't exist at all. It's Saturday and I've gotten lost a few times. But I finally found the coffee house Mother wanted me to meet her at. I spot her immediately as I enter, sitting at one of the tables by the window. Mother looks as put together as ever. She is fine, I have to say. She looks pretty young too. To have like a kid, I guess. Eh. I walk up to her table. She only gives me one of her inscrutable expressions. Hello, Mother. I'm sorry I'm late. I got a little lost on the way. As I take my seat, I realize she's already ordered something for me. Mother looks at me over her teacup with that usual half-smile of hers. I did not wait long, but I did wonder if you would be able to find this place. I know it is a little out of the way. Most people don't know much about this district. I eventually figured it out. So, um, I didn't know you frequented places like this. Mother gently places her teacup on the table. The eerie color of her eyes always make me feel like she can see right through me. For a moment, I feel like I'm 10 again, being judged to see if I'm worthy of knowledge. I don't. But a very old friend of mine owns this place. I wanted to come see it at least once. An old friend? Now I'm curious, though I doubt she'd actually tell me more. Oh, I see. An un uncomfortable silence settles upon us, as usual. And as usual, I start rambling. So, school has been great. I even joined a club. Oh, but how are Dad and Kayo doing? Hmm. Your sister began school. She apparently made a friend, a very nice boy. And Rukuro is out of the country on business this week. Having nothing else to say, the conversation quickly dies down. This is literally me whenever I'm talking to my parents. There isn't much to say, <laughs> apart from like how school's going and stuff. And right now it's, you know, summer vacation, so... Eh. I look out the window as I quietly sip my tea. Lunch with mother. It's not even a bit awkward. Nope. But at least Kayo has a new friend. I hold back a sigh. Tsubasa, I must admit, I asked you to meet me here for a reason. There is somewhere I want to take you. I have been meaning to ever since we came back to Japan. Will you come with me? She seems... sad? It's utterly strange to see my always controlled mother let any emotion slip. I'm left speechless, but I can't hide the curiosity bubbling up inside me. She almost never wants to share anything with me. So this has to be something huge. Of course, mother, I'll go with you. After we finish eating, I follow mother out of the coffee house. Her high heels click against the pavement as she walks in front of me. It's just the same. Even though I'm 20, I still feel like a child. Always following, never catching up. But maybe now she sees me as an adult. Maybe things will be different from now on. It's with these thoughts that I eagerly get into her car. I sit in the car beside my mother, looking out the window. Maybe if I ask, she'll tell me where we're going? For once? I sigh, knowing she'll just evade the question if she doesn't want to answer it. If she wanted me to know, she would have told me. I sneak a glance at her. 
her knuckles are white from how hard she's gripping the steering wheel, and there's a somber expression on her face that I can't quite place. Seeing her of all people so unsettled makes me beyond anxious. Mother, where are you taking me? Um, mother? Yes? Where are we going? I can't keep the nervousness out of my voice, and mother seems to pick up on it, as she usually does. There's no need to concern yourself. Mm, nice. I sit back in the seat with a sigh. I knew she wasn't going to tell me. But unexpectedly, Mother keeps talking. We are going to the countryside. I will explain more when we get there, but please, just relax and make yourself comfortable. The countryside? I guess it might be a few hours then. I can't believe she even said that much, though. I settle on my seat for the long ride, feeling like I might have made a small breakthrough with my mother. After a very quiet car ride, we finally stopped at a house in the country. I step outside of the car in amazement. A traditional home. Whose house is this? A gentle breeze sways through the tall field, rippling through the blades of grass. It makes such a pleasant sound and it smells so good out here that my nerves are somewhat calmed. It's beautiful out here. Yes, it is. Mother walks ahead of me with a key and it unlocks the door to the house. I hesitate a moment, not wanting to go inside. The sunset is so beautiful, but I can't keep Mother waiting. Maybe I can come outside later. Regretfully, I walk into the house ahead of Mother, who follows me in and shuts the door. Wait here. I will bring us some refreshments. Okay. Mother leaves before I can finish the sentence. Alone in the room, I sit down at the table. I'm not sure where we are, but it's very peaceful out here. The sound of the door sliding open distracts me from my thoughts. Mother comes in carrying a tray of snacks and some tea. She glides across the room and gently places the tray on the table in front of me. Now we can have our chat a little more comfortably. Thank you. Mother sits down on the other side of the table. I'm sure you're wondering what this place is and why I brought you here. Of course. For a few moments we sit in silence. Mother seems to be thinking about how to say it. This house is built on the land my ancestors lived on hundreds of years ago. They lived and worked here. They spilled blood here. The way she sends it, she says it, sends a faint chill down my spine. I wanted to bring you here to show you this place that's so full of history. There aren't many things left here from that time, but I thought you would enjoy seeing it anyway. She takes a small sip from her cup and I follow suit. A pleasant warmth washes, washes over my body. I can't talk today. Thank you for the tea, it's very good. Can you show me around a bit? Ugh. A wave of dizziness hits me like a ton of bricks. As the world starts to spin, I have to physically hold on to the table. Tsubasa, are you alright? I, uh, I don't feel well. Everything keeps spinning and my vision goes black. I open my eyes. I see the moon hanging up high in the sky above me. The sky is... wait, huh? Where the hell am I? I try to move, but my body is completely unresponsive. What is this? What's going on? Why can't I move? H help me, someone please. I'm panicking, but I can hear someone coming closer. They're, they're muttering under their breath. Up already? Shh. I knew I should have used more potion. Did they say potion? Help me, please, help. Someone sighs. It's useless to shout, you know. No one will hear you. But don't worry, this will be over soon. What? Who are you? What's going on? Another sigh, then footsteps. A familiar face comes into view. How did she not know her mother's own voice? Mother stands over me, her eyes glowing. Mother, what? I told you, it's going to be over soon. Mother snaps her fingers. As if I was a marionette on strings, my body plays along, sitting up on its own. I can see a strange chalk circle outline on the ground around us. Her heels click against the stone. She walks to something that looks suspiciously like an altar of some sort. Please explain. What have you done to me? Why? How? I don't know if this is that natural a sentence, but mm, whatever. I can see her eyes dart towards me momentarily as she continues to work. She places various crystals along the chalk outline. My heart is beating impossibly fast. I try to stay calm as, I, as, calm as I possibly can. I suppose I should explain. It's only fair. She stops and looks at me. I am. I am many things.
My true name is Shizuka. I am the last living sorceress. A mistake rendered me cursed, unable to die. What? But how is that even possible? I want to doubt her words to simply write this all away as some weird dream. But it feels real. Too real. She laughs and continues her strange preparations. The curse of immortality is immortal as well. Of course it would be like that. It's almost funny. It might have been an accident, but considering who he is, it makes perfect sense. For centuries I have searched for a way to undo the curse. I thought it hopeless, until a friend told me of a way I could finally be rid of it. Mother continues to carefully place crystals in a circle around me. The only way it would work, however, is if I completed the ritual on a very specific date. And if I had someone very specific to transfer the curse onto. With a momentary pause, she glanced at me. A daughter? No, not a daughter. A humunculus, the perfect copy of my physical self. And so I created you. I'm not your mother. I'm the alchemist who made you. Any words I could say get stuck in my throat. I feel like I'm going to pass out again. This has to be some sick joke. This can't be real. This is all just a terrible dream. I just need to wake up and I'll be back in my bedroom. But this, by some insane chance, is real. There are some things I want to know. Who cursed you? Isn't there any other way? What about dad? I want to say who cursed you because I think I already asked about um, the father earlier. I mean, in a previous prologue playthrough or whatever. Who was it who cursed you? Just how old are you anyway? A god. So ancient he no longer remembers his own name. As for my age, I'm over 700 years old. There are a million more things I want to ask, but Shizuka carefully places the last crystal. The chalk outline suddenly glows an eerie green. Wait! With a wave of her hand, my lips snap shut. Now completely paralyzed, all I can do is watch. Shizuka kneels in front of me. She takes out a small vial of some strange liquid. It looks like billions of tiny shimmering stars gently swirling together in a tiny bottle. She quickly downs it. Ugh, that tasted about as bad as I expected. Shizuka stares at me and I can see the greens of her eyes start to swirl and change into brown. I feel a sharp pain in mine at the same time. I'm going to scream as the pain spreads from my eyes to the rest of my body. But since I can't move, all I can do is scream in my head. It hurts so much. Please make it stop. As my vision slowly darkens, I see Shizuka stand up, her eyes now completely brown. I'm sorry. I can barely hear her, the, her whisper the words. As she disappears from my vision, the world goes dark. Man, that is like world's worst mom. Ugh. I grab my head that's throbbing with pain. Where am I? I'm so groggy I can scarcely remember my own name, much less what happened yesterday. I manage to force my eyes open and ease myself up into a sitting position. Holding my head still, I go back through everything I remember. I went to school, then I met mother for lunch on Saturday. Flashes of strange images suddenly come to mind. A strange house I didn't know my mother owned. Having tea by the setting sun. Then last, the feelings of helplessness, fear and confusion while my mother made strange preparations under a full moon. And of course, brief but excruciating pain. I laugh nervously. That's right. It must have been some dream. It must have been a dream. I can't shake the negative feelings the dream gave me, though, or my grogginess. Somehow, though, I managed to push myself out of bed. I check my phone screen. I notice there's an email notification from the school, but more importantly, crap, I have to go to school. I rush to get dressed and grab some pain relievers before I run out the door. While waiting for a traffic light to change, I check my phone. Curious, I opened the email I saw earlier. You have been added to Intro to Mystical Studies 101. Please follow the instructions below to find your class. So was it the mom who like enrolled her into this course? I guess because she probably had access to her laptop when she took her back home. Why would she do that? Hmm. What? I think back, but I don't remember requesting any such class. Mystical studies? Is that like religion or something? The class starts almost immediately after my last one of the day, so I won't have time to find out about it. I'll just go walk to the teacher and talk to the teacher and figure it out later. The light turns green and I put my phone away. Yeah, I won't worry about all this weird stuff. I'll just keep focused on what I need to do today. 
Despite my best efforts, my headache never went away. But all my classes are done for the day. Well, except for one. I go in the elevator and look for a button to the basement as the instructions said. I didn't even know this place had a basement. Place finger over elevator buttons. Hmm. I hover my finger over nothing, feeling like an idiot. But then the air shimmers around my hand. A button appears in the empty space, with a symbol indicating basement. Nice. What? Just happened? Okay. Okay, Tsubasa. Just stay calm. You're probably just tired and seeing things. I firmly cut off all other thoughts forming in my mind and press the button. I step out into a hallway that looks like something out of a fantasy movie. Nice. You got transported to, like, Hogwarts. Okay. This is getting so weird that even I'm starting to have trouble ignoring it. I'm nervous now. There aren't any students that I can see, and I'm a little intimidated by the dimly lit hall. I slowly walk down the corridor. The rooms are sparse and few between, leading me to wonder just how big the rooms are. Finally, I stop in front of a large door. I take a deep breath to gather my courage. <laughs> Bruh, I will just leave. I push it open. A black-haired man turns to look at me. I get an intense sensation of deja vu. Are you Professor Kazama? So there you are, Fujimoto. I'm um, sorry I'm late. It took me longer than I thought to get here. No worries. It's your first day. Have a seat. Oh, that's so embarrassing. But it looks like there's nobody there, so that's nice. <laughs> Even though I know there are people there. I do as I'm told. I scan the room quickly and find an empty seat in the strange classroom. Wait, did I just... I could swear that I just saw some familiar people in, people in the class. But it would be rude to look around, so I just face forward. Oh, I forgot to ask if I should be in this class. Oh well, um, I am curious to see what it's about. Professor Kazama walks up to me and hands me a syllabus. When I look down at it, I'm not sure if it's a joke or not. Objectives? Understand early magical history. Understand basics of advanced magical theory. Demonstrate mastery of basic magical techniques. What is this? But by then, the professor has already walked back to the front of the room. He launches into a lecture on something called the Unseen World. Everyone around me looks as if this is nothing new, but I keep waiting for the punchline. It's more correct, correct to call the Unseen World multiple realms. Most supernatural beings live within the hidden pocket of the human realm, but there are at least nine different realms that we know of. I'm trying to keep my focus on the lecture, but I'm kind of freaking out. What Professor Kazama is saying sounds insane, yet no one around me is reacting to it. On top of everything, there are windows in the class. In a basement. <laughs> and they're showing some kind of mountain scenery. None of this makes any sense. I feel like I have to get out of the room or I'll lose my mind. But through force of will, I manage to keep it together until the end of class. That's when the professor asks me to come up to the front of the room. Fujimoto, would you come up to the front of the class? I'd like you to provide a demonstration of your power for us. Oh, this is... <laughs> I almost forgot about this part. <laughs> Ugh. Huh? I walk up to the front slowly, in a complete daze. This will be your home room for your magical classes. But I've been asked to see what you can do so we can better place you in the rest of your classes. Okay, but who did this? Like, who knows that she has powers now? Is it the mom before she left? That is real, really weird mom. <laughs> I've been asked to see what you can do so we can better place you in the rest of your classes. I, I have no idea what's going on here, but I think you have the wrong girl. You mean you really have no idea what any of this is about? No, I don't. Well, maybe the fastest way for you to understand is through a first-hand experience. With that, Professor Kazama places one of his hands out toward me, palm up. A small sphere of light forms over it, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? What is going on here? Generally Genuinely scared, I take a few steps back amidst the murmurs of the class. Here goes. Why would you do this? Like, I'm honestly dead. If you don't know somebody's powers, you shouldn't be doing this. Because what if it's like something wild? Which, eh. Kazama pulls his hand back, aiming the spear right at me. How? Why is this happening? What do I do? My fear, stress, and confusion with the entire situation finally comes to a boiling point. The splitting headache I've had all day is just the icing on the cake. All of a sudden, more than anything else, I'm pissed off. 
a hot feeling bubbles up inside me and I feel like I'm going to burn up. A painfully bright light surrounds me. I can barely understand what's happening as Kazama throws the spear at me. Spear at me. This is some bad teaching. Just bad parenting and teaching all around. I'm aware of the sensation of cold, hard stone underneath me. I feel extremely worn out, like I can't even move my head. But I also notice my headache is gone. For some reason, I smell smoke and I struggle to open my eyes. I see two surprising people around me, from the business club of all places. The one kneeling next to me is... Sho. And the one standing looking down at me is... Tetsuya. What are they doing here? I also see many students standing around. Farther away, I see a beautiful woman tending to Kazama, who is holding his hand. Sorry about this, Luz. Just try not to get yourself blown up again for a while, Hikaru. So his name is Hikaru. Hikaru. I think, you know, from... Anyway, <laughs> something about the name strikes me as being right. Far more than Kazama. And what does she mean by blown up? That's when the previous events all coming, all come rushing back to me. I try to sit up, but Sho puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't overdo it. Just lie down. You must be exhausted after releasing so much power. P power? Just then, Shinji walks over. He's here too? What the hell is going on? That's right. You kind of blew up the classroom. Yeah, sorry about that. I turn and see Hikaru, Hikaru walk up to the group. Despite what Sho said, I managed to push myself up anyway. I really underestimated you. Thankfully, I managed to shield everyone in time, but my hand in the classroom didn't get off so easy. I look down at his hand. It's covered in bandages. I feel distinctly horrified and so confused. I did that? You did. I know it wasn't on purpose, but that just makes you even more dangerous. I don't know how you awakened so suddenly and with so much power, but you're too dangerous right now to others and yourself. You need to partner with someone until you can get your powers under control. What do you mean by partner with someone? I don't even understand where these supposed powers came from. Then it hits me. My mother. The ritual. Somehow it wasn't a dream. Regardless, you need a lot more instruction than just a class every morning, every evening. You need someone who will be able to help you to learn the basics and protect themselves from you. Professor Kazama looks around at the guys surrounding me. Since these young men seem to be so interested in you, maybe you could choose one of them? Every one of them is trustworthy. I know you'll be able to rely on them. What? Seriously, Mr. K? You have got to be kidding me. I don't have to time ah, I don't have time to babysit anyone. Mmm, nice. If she needs help, I don't mind. Shinji, you are the true bro. Consider an assignment. I'll grade you on it and everything if you want. But Fujimoto, your powers are far too volatile to be left alone. I know it's a lot to ask, but please make your decision now. <coughs> Alright, so I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, obviously, we're going to go with Shinji, but it basically gives you the idea of the story and what's going to happen or what has happened before we can move on to Shinji's route. Um, I'm just gonna end the let's play here and basically, you know, there should already be a Shinji um, let's play on my channel, but if there isn't, then it should be there in like a little while. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts um, or anything that you want to say basically in the comments below. For anybody who's you know, still waiting on the Voltage Ink Let's Play, I will get to it, but right now I need to figure out what screen recorder I can use or, you know, whatever um, app that lets me, you know, record the screen so I can actually do the Let's Play. And, um, yeah. So I hope you liked it. Um, please, you know, like the video, comment, subscribe, yada yada. And I'll see you soon.